To answer the point about whether I discuss red light or not, what I always do in these sort of sessions is I talk about educating people. So this is all about education, this is not about me selling my services. Of course, I offer these services if anybody wants them uh, in support after the event. This is about educating the marketplace to get people to think about what they need to do and how they need to do that better. So, talking about LinkedIn. So the problem with LinkedIn is, in real terms, it is a massive, massive piece of the overall digital marketing jigsaw. And that's what digital marketing is. It is a jigsaw. It's all the different platforms, all the different features and functions and Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and Snapchat and email marketing and video. My friend over here is uh, the past master of video. And essentially what we're looking at is saying, like, this big piece there is so underused, so undervalued, and so misrepresented in terms of what it can actually do for the one thing that all businesses want. And the one thing that all businesses want is business. So what I always say is, in terms of social media, a lot of people spend time on social media. We all spend time on Facebook, we all spend time on Twitter, etc. But actually, when it comes to LinkedIn, you're actually investing time. Because everything you do on LinkedIn will have business results. It will bring back business benefit, if it's done properly. The problem is, you've missed the first 30 seconds. Do you want me to start again? <laughs> I was only introducing where we are on that. But Sorry. essentially, what, what we're talking about from a LinkedIn point of view is really saying it is about business and it's about business generating and it's about sales. So whilst we're investing time, what we've got to look at in, in real terms from, from our point of view is what is the number one job on your LinkedIn profile? And sadly, a lot of people who've got a LinkedIn profile, their number one job for that is to have a LinkedIn profile and nothing more. It's just a profile that sits there. I did it a few years ago. I might have updated it a couple of times. Worse, I put it up there because I was looking for a job, so it's written like a CV. And we have to remember that LinkedIn originally was a CV platform, right? It was a job search platform. So a lot of the features and functionality that LinkedIn has got still sort of hark back to those days of recruitment. But actually, if you actually use it for lead generation, it is far better from a lead generation perspective than any other social media uh, uh, platform. You might be able to generate a lot more leads off Facebook if you're into the business consumer. Or in fact, you might be able to get more, more leads through email marketing if you're using email marketing platforms. But from a LinkedIn point of view, there is nothing better than a business network system. So, what we want from that point of view is, LinkedIn is about relationships. It's about that business networking. Getting to know people, getting to introduce yourself to them, talking to them, finding out common goals, and actually helping them with what they do. At the end of the day, you're starting a conversation with these people, and what you're trying to do is generate leads. And those leads, hopefully, will come into sales. So when we talk about investing time on LinkedIn, what we're really saying by investing time is, we actually want some business for our business. We want to make money. So it is not, it is not a case of simply saying, from that point of view, we're just gonna play around with LinkedIn and see what we get. This has gotta be a proper business strategy. Business leads, that transform into business sales. And what I always say on LinkedIn, it, it, it's almost like the LinkedIn Bible. We can always find somebody else doing what we do, saying what we say, probably not as good as me, maybe a bit more photogenic, but that's not a hint then. Somebody else is always out there, we've all got competitors, there is somebody else that can actually deliver what we're delivering. So it comes down to that old phrase, people by people. And it is still so true. Even with this digital marketing world that we're living in, people by people. And often I say, from my perspective to the people I work with, people might buy you first, the product second. And if they don't buy into you, it doesn't matter how good that product's going to be, they're still not going to buy it. They will find somebody else to actually buy that product from. So what we've got to do is actually sort of position ourselves and one thing we have with all these LinkedIn presentations is these fantastic quotes. So you've got to mention Charles Darwin somewhere along the line. And effectively, to paraphrase Charles Darwin, he basically said, evolve or die. Right? And that's what it was all about. Have you evolved? And LinkedIn has certainly moved on massively from where it was as a recruitment platform. It is now probably the best sales lead generating tool available to any sales teams. And again, as I said earlier on, it's the most underused. It's not the difference between success and failure, but it certainly will point you in the direction of success if you use it properly. And again, coming back to the point I made earlier on, it's not just about having a profile. It's what you do with that profile and how you market that profile, which we're gonna walk into today. And it is also a case of, doesn't matter what I say to you today in terms of what you can and can't do, you have to tailor it 
to suit both you and the audience that you're trying to market to. Because there is no right or wrong way in real terms. There's a process that you can follow, but what we're really looking for is how can you adapt that process for the best results for your particular circumstances. So, let's start with a profile. And, and sadly, I've used my own. Uh, I have to say, I'm not into the selfie culture. With a face like mine, you can understand that why. But obviously, I've put my profile up there. It's got my picture on it, terrible as it is. But let's, let's use this as an example, okay? First things first, the headline. You'll see mine says digital marketing, search, social, etc., etc. Right? This isn't selling me, by the way. This is just example stuff. Right? And, I don't, and she says at the end, it says Red Live Media right at the end. It actually, doesn't say your job title. And that's the first mistake 99% of people make on LinkedIn. Is their, their LinkedIn profile headline says marketing director, managing director, marketing executive, technician, whatever it might be. It says what you do. So let's think about that for a second. Last week in Birmingham, I was, I was speaking at the Recruitment Expo. Lots of recruitment, in fact, there's probably about 200 people in the room. They're on the way, any minute now. There's about 200 people in the room, all recruitment people, right? and they were all talking about how to use LinkedIn. But the funny bit about that was, if you actually put your job title in your headline, who's going to contact you? Recruitment agencies, because they're looking for marketing managers, sales managers, technicians, executives, etc. And where do they find these people? They find them on LinkedIn. So if you put your job title first, I'll guarantee the most connection requests that you'll get over the next six months will be from recruitment agencies. Right? So don't do it. So what we have to think of is take a little step back and say, LinkedIn is a search engine. Ooh. It's very much like Google. It uses what's called Boolean search technology. A bit techy. Right. Boolean search technology is exactly the same stuff that Google uses. But what it basically means is anything that you put in here is indexable content. So if somebody is on LinkedIn and they're looking for somebody who does digital marketing or search or social, my profile may well appear. But as a search engine, it is also fully indexed by Google. So if somebody's typing into Google those words or phrases, my LinkedIn profile might actually appear on page one of Google. My website might not, any other content that I've got might not, but my LinkedIn profile might because it's the fourth largest search engine in the world and it's being indexed by Google. Hallelujah, fantastic. So we need to get that right. So what we've got to start thinking of is going back to those halcyon days of Google and search engine optimization for all those who want to glaze over. Keywords. You know, if somebody was trying to find you, what word or phrase would they type in to try and find you? What are the phrases that you really want to be found for? And try and build those in to your headline. Okay, you've only got a, a 120 character limit, so it might struggle on that, but remember, you've got all the other stuff below that, so try and put the main, the top headline stuff within there to actually get that, that search system working, actually get people finding you. Secondly, don't write it as a CV. It is not about you. And I, I call it the me, me, me approach. It was a fantastic example, which I have to say, I took a slide because I talk too much and there's too many slides. But, um, there was a guy actually, he actually put a post up on LinkedIn, and it was about uh, what a great job he'd actually done for a particular client. And I thought, well, that's really good. He didn't mention the client, he didn't mention actually what he'd done, he just said how great he was by doing the great job, which is completely meaningless and utterly meaningless as far as I'm concerned. So what we actually want to do is basically say to people, rather than me, 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 say, actually, what can I do for you? What problem have my customers commonly got that I can solve? So if you're in the print industry, you know that the vast majority of your clients come to you because they've got this issue and you've got the solution for it. Let's talk about, I, saw, I use that solution to help my clients with that problem. If you've got the problem, talk to me, connect with me on LinkedIn. So let's start to use it a little bit more strategically. Now, I should do it, I'll, I'll go back one. We all know the little, little pencil mark at the top. Has everybody got a LinkedIn profile? I'm assuming we've all got one, yeah? Okay. So we know the little pencil bit at the top is the editing bit. And um, we'll talk about this right-hand side bit a little bit further down. But when you click that editing bit, what, what's absolutely brilliant in LinkedIn now is they've made it with their latest updates over the last few months. They've made it an awful lot easier to actually edit. So when you do that, you come up, and obviously it's got my details on there. I can now type my headline in there. Right, nice and easy, and obviously when I update that, my headline will change. More importantly, I can put my position, so I can still say I'm a sales director if I want to. And then I, I, you've got the education bit. But you've got this bit here. Anybody actually notice this when you're doing any updates? Right? Sharing profile changes. Now what that actually means is, 
let's say today, and I know I'm stretching the imagination by a mile, but let's say I say something interesting, and you all want to go back and uh, massively update your LinkedIn profile. If you go into your profile and you change your image, your background image, your headline, your summary, your content, you might do five, six, seven, eight, nine updates to your profile. Well, if you're doing those, every time you go and do those updates, if you then press save, which basically publishes those updates, everybody you're connected to gets to know about that. So you can start becoming a bit of a pain in the bottom if everybody keeps getting all these updates that you're doing. So what you can actually do is you switch that off. Then you can actually do all of the updates that you want to do. And then you switch it back on and they only get one notification that you've updated your profile. So you're not annoying a lot of people. Or you might not want people to know that you've updated your profile if you want to keep yourself a little bit secret. Why are you going to do that? If you're looking from a sales lead generation perspective, you certainly don't want to be doing that. Okay. Then we go to scroll down a little bit further. We've then got the summary, right, which I'm going to go to a, a little bit further. The summary is, the, if not the most important, certainly the, the, in the top two elements within the LinkedIn profile, your headline and the summary. Okay? All of the other stuff, quite frankly, becomes secondary. Because if somebody's interested in connecting with you, they're going to look at your headline, they're going to start reading the summary. If you haven't sold to them by then, in terms of why they should connect with you or why they should invite with you, they're not going to. They're not going to read everything else. So what we need to look at is what's in that summary. Right? So there's a couple of things on there which I'll come back to in a minute as well. But firstly, the bottom of my summary, which is why I've done it this way around, I've got my email address and my phone number. One of the first tips that I say to people, whenever you've written a LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile, make it easy for people to contact you. Don't make them search around LinkedIn and where do I get this guy's telephone number, where's his email address? Put it front and centre and in your summary they'll be able to get through to you then. You, it's a call to action. And then more importantly, at the bottom, you can listen to specialities. So you can really, again, come back to the, what problems do you solve? What customers do you work with? You can put some headline things on there so that they can say, actually, this is the guy that might be able to help you. And then, of course, we've got media down here, which we'll come on to shortly. Uh, how many people post onto LinkedIn, post content? Articles, videos, anything regularly? Yeah, okay. All right, we'll come back to that shortly. Hello, why have we stopped over there? Right, okay. So now, I've got my summary now. I've got my, my bit at the top. So the first things we've got there, we've got... My little pointer doesn't work, brilliant. I've got 500 plus. Has everybody got 500 plus connections on LinkedIn? Yeah? Anybody not got 500 connections? Okay. 500 is a bit of a magic number. All right. So it's a balancing act, because what you want in your network, you actually want connections that are adding value to your network, and you can add value to them. What you don't want is 500 connections with people that you've never spoken to, you've never done any business with, and you're not likely to do any business with. Because those connections, quite frankly, are a waste of time and effort. So we've got this balancing factor to do, but once you get to 500, you'll notice that it says 500 plus. If you've got 499, it says 499. If you've got 510, it says 500 plus. Because it's almost a cut-off point, because once you get there, LinkedIn actually perceives you as being an authority. Somebody who's got a business network. So you've just got a 500 plus, so you, you've almost elevated yourself. So coming back to that search bit we were talking about earlier on, if people are searching and your profile might appear on, on page one or, or on LinkedIn searches, what you'll find is the more of an authority you are in terms of your connections, the more likely you are to appear higher up on that list. Okay, so first off, I've got my profile. Does anybody see a, a bit of a difference in my profile here to a lot of other profiles? You can scan read it. We are all bone idle. We're all lazy. We are. Well, I said, I'm speaking to the converted, but we are bone idle. When we look at somebody's profile and he's got big blocks of text, you know, explaining how great they are, do you read it? I don't. But people will scan read. Because what they're looking for is, is this person somebody I want to connect with? Do I want to invite them to connect? Or do I want to accept their connection request? So I want to scan read and say, is this person the right person for me? So all I've done is I've put a little bit of an introduction, some very short sentences that are broken down, and then I've got effectively some bullet points down there, and then my call to action at the end. And when I get to the call to action, okay, I've got it at the, at the bottom of there, somebody put, quote, simply the best presentation of the whole event. Obviously this one won't be, but you know, we can't have it every time. But essentially I thought, you want to know more, let's start the conversation, I've got my email address, I've got my phone number, I've got my call to action. If you like what you see, call me, email me, let's get in touch. Let's start that business connection. This is about lead generation, remember that. 
got the specialities there. And that call to action is so, so important. And, and most people I see when they invite me to connect, if I look at their summaries, it's missing. I have to go and find, like, find perfect example, last week, Recruitment Expo, somebody contacted me in the week through LinkedIn and said, hi John, loved your presentation last week, I'd love to have a conversation with you, blah, 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 you know, get, keep in touch, connect with me on LinkedIn. And I went on and looked, they don't even list their email address on their LinkedIn profile. Right? So the only way I can actually get in touch with them is through LinkedIn messaging, which is okay, but I haven't got an email address. So, profile summary. This is from LinkedIn. Hallelujah. They, they make it easy for you. And uh, what I'll do is that the first things first, I'll take this out. At the bottom it says, ready to talk, reach out to me. Well, I'm, I'm one of those pet haters. If anybody ever says to me, I'm reaching out to you, and the phone suddenly goes dead. I don't know why, the phrase just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. But apart from that, that is link, LinkedIn's suggestion of how to write the perfect summary. So if you read this, and by the way, everybody can have copies of these slides, so you can, you can all take it back and have a look at it. But if you read this and see how does your summary compare to what LinkedIn say, says you need. And if we basically summarise it, what I do, I help a particular audience to achieve their goal by providing a service. What is the problem you solve? How do you add value to the conversation? Why should they connect with you? And if you can write your summary in that way, you are going to get far more people wanting to connect with you and do business with you. And that's the key bit. This isn't about numbers of connections, this is about people who are going to do business with you. So, if we actually then look at, remember I said about the, the right hand side, the column on the right hand side down there, you've, you've then got your contact details, personal information. And if you click on that contact and personal information, we've still got our little pencil to edit it, and we can actually go through, so I've got my LinkedIn profile. My profile says John Heffern in Digital Marketing. Now, I'd be surprised if there isn't one person in this room that basically says forward slash in forward slash one two three four five x y z because that's the default LinkedIn address that they give you when you sign up and if you don't change it that's what your profile looks like yet coming back to the fact that LinkedIn is the fourth largest search engine in the world it works on Boolean search technology and it looks at keywords you can change that so I've got my name in it which is obviously what you should have but I've also got digital marketing as a generic term that's in my profile itself, on my ID. That's how LinkedIn identifies it. So you need to look at that. If you haven't got a, a personalized ID, that's the first thing you should change when you go back today. Change it. And it's so easy, just click the little pencil at the top and you can do it. We'll come onto the websites in a minute. Obviously I've got my phone number and my address, I've got my email address so that people can contact me. When we come to websites, how many people's LinkedIn profile says company website? Yeah? How many people know whether it says company website or not? I'm not sure, right? Go look at your profile, and if it says company website, uh -uh, you've done it wrong. So what you actually do is this. You've got the websites there, and bear in mind I've got three here, most people will only have one. When you click that pencil, you get this come up, right? And this is basically to edit your contact info. But what you do is you type in your URL, so I've got redline media forward slash search, and then in that drop box, select other because it will default to company website. You can have personal website, you can have every other one, but select other. Because when you select other, it then opens this box, and this box allows me to type in words or phrases I want to be found for if somebody is searching LinkedIn. So again, it's keyword search technology using that Google Boolean search system. I can put keywords in related to. And because I've got three options, I've got forward slash search, forward slash digital marketing, forward slash blog. I'm then creating three links back to my website. So if you're in a business and you've got 10 people on LinkedIn and they all do this, you've got 30 links coming back from your LinkedIn profiles, going back to your website, and from a search engine optimization point of view, that's manna from heaven to an SEO agency to get 30 good quality links, particularly from the fourth largest search engine in the world. So just changing that, makes you look more efficient, you've got more keyword search facilities in there, and you're generating links back to your website, which everybody needs. Wow, simple. And you can do that in a few moments. Okay. Anybody use the advanced search? Yeah? That wasn't everybody. That wasn't everybody. Right, okay. So in this instance, I just put in label printing, and came up with dear old Malcolm, Malcolm Bunn, at Label Solutions. Absolutely great guy, um, Label Solutions based down in Essex. What I love about Malcolm is he listened to one of my presentations 
and he went away and he changed his, his, his profile and he put, ready to assist with your printed label requirements. What an opening line in his, head, in his headline statement. Right? He's clearly saying, you've got anything you need with labels, I'm ready to help you. Right? He's putting himself up there front and centre, this is what I can do to help you. Absolutely superb. But essentially, but you can put it in, in the, the advanced search, you can type in any word or phrase, any group, any name, and then you can search across the top, whether you want to, to search generically or whether it's specifically for people. We won't talk about jobs today. Whether it's content, whether it's companies, if you're searching for a particular company. So if you want to find the marketing director of a particular company, search that company and maybe add marketing director to it, you will find it. Then you've got all of these filters that come into play. Now, those filters then allow you to effectively fine-tune your results. And a lot of so one example I did, I was looking, I looked the other day for Telford and I put in print buyers, and I put print buyers in the UK was something like 72,000, and then I put print buyers in Telford and it narrowed it down to about 4,000, and of course the geographic radius is probably the whole of the West Midlands and Shropshire area, but at the end of the day you can actually narrow it down even further using all of the different tools that are within there. What a lot of people tend to forget is this bit, who saves their searches? Anybody? Brilliant. Right. First off, who's, anybody use Sales Navigator? No? We'll talk about that later. Okay. There's a recruiter as well, but I'm not talking about recruiting today. The Save Searches bit, you can actually put what's here called Create a Search Alert. All right. So, to use my example, if I'm looking for a print buyer in the Telford area, and I get all those lists on there of print buyers that I can contact, if I save that search, it actually saves the search for me. That's exactly what it does. It saves the search. So if somebody, if you then decided you wanted to become a print buyer in the Telford area and you amend your LinkedIn profile and your LinkedIn profile now says print buyer in Telford area, LinkedIn send me a message saying, Claire. Claire. Right? They say Claire is now a print buyer in the Telford area. So I know she's probably moved into a new job or she's moved into the area or she's transferred, whatever. I can have a look at her profile. LinkedIn are actually telling me here's a lead for you for something that you've already looked for. And that gives me a reason to contact you. Because I can say, congratulations on the new role, or welcome to the area. Let's connect, let's stay in touch. They'll give you the leads. So once you've actually done the searching through advanced search, always use the save search function. You'll find it amazingly brilliant in what it does. So coming back to the Boolean search, I keep saying that, I'm sorry, but in terms of Google, search, tips and hints. Okay, so let's say for instance, I'm looking for a sales and marketing director. Okay. If I type in sales and marketing, it's looking for anybody who might be a sales director, a marketing director, a sales and marketing director. Right? So it's broad brush. If I type sales or marketing director, it's looking for variants of the two. If I put keyword, not keyword, which means sales, not marketing, it will only deliver me sales directors, not people who've got marketing director. So again, it's filtering it down. And that's exactly the same system as to whether you do that through the Google search or whether you do it through LinkedIn. don't know whether you know that, if you're looking for something in particular, if you use the same principle, you can actually narrow your search field down further. And then you can use this, this inverted commas. So let's say for instance I was looking for flights to Barcelona, right? If I put flights to Barcelona in inverted commas, it will only provide, produce results for me that are about flights to Barcelona. Right? Whereas if I leave it open, it's got flights to, it will bring everything from flights to you know, flights, Barcelona, Barcelona flights, etc. Right? If you do it that way, it's what's called exact match, which is exactly the same principle as Google AdWords, exact match searching, it's delivering exactly what you're looking for by putting inverted commas at either end of the, of the phrase. And of course, we, we should all know that if you're actually doing anything in terms of search engine optimization, the best rate of return you'll get in terms of SEO is on the longer tail phrases where people are looking for something very specific that you can provide because they will search on more words. Right? So they don't just search for print, they don't search for print buyers, they're looking for print buyers in the Telford area or print buyers in this particular uh, facility, whatever it might be. So that longer term phrase is absolutely huge. So you need to make sure, if there are longer term phrases that you put in there in terms of your visibility, have you got those phrases in your LinkedIn profile? So we've got an exact match within your LinkedIn profile. So if that's what somebody's looking for, will they find you? So let's assume now we've got a list, we've got a whole list of people, we've searched our print buyers in the Telford area, I've got 7,000 people that have come up on the list, I might have narrowed it down, I'm now down to only 150 or 200 real key targets that I want to get to. Now I need to contact them. 
So the first thing I need to do is what? Anybody? It's not coffee time yet, obviously. I need to look at their profile. You should never, ever try and contact anybody on LinkedIn without looking at their profile first. And it's one of my rule of thumb. If somebody sends me an invitation, and sometimes I'll get the, I'd like to join your LinkedIn network, standard message, which drives me to the wall, by the way. If I get the standard message, the next thing I will do is I will go to my analytics in Google, you know, who's viewed your profile, which everybody can do, and I look at the who's viewed your profile, and if they haven't looked at my profile and they've sent me a standardized message, I click ignore. Because they haven't given me a reason to connect, and they don't even know who, who I am, really, because they've probably just found me on one of these scammer systems that are out there. And there's a lot of them. These people that say, we'll find you 50 leads a week, etc. They're just mining the data. They're not looking at your profile. If somebody's really interested in connecting you to do business, they're going to look at your profile. So think about that in reverse. If you're looking at connecting with somebody through the, the advanced search that you found, you need to look at that, that prospect's profile. And then when you click connect, this little box pops up. Okay, and it actually tells you that this, this never used to be there. It used to be the default, you know, if you click connect, it gave you the default invitation. Right? So LinkedIn basically said, look guys, we're trying to encourage you here. Personalize it a little bit. So what you should always do is add a note. You should personalize that invitation. Why connect? So an example would be in this particular one, well, hi Stuart, great to meet you yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Now, the, the, the trick would be, if we take today as an example, it might be, um, Hi John, saw your, saw your presentation at um, where are we? Print Week Live, right. the print show, get it right, sorry, right. I saw your presentation at the print show, liked what you said, would like to connect with you on LinkedIn, so you've told me who you are, where you, where you saw me, and why you want to connect, you've given me a reason to connect with you, and that should be the yardstick for everybody, if they don't give you a reason to connect, why should you connect with them, because once you do, you're potentially opening your network to that particular person. So really, it's protecting your network by going through those default settings. Always make sure that you add, you, you, you add a personalized note. And the more personalized you make it, the better chance you've got of people actually connecting with you. And the, the statistics from LinkedIn say that 98% of people who receive a personalized note will accept your invitation to connect. 98%. If you send the standard one, anybody would know what that's going to be? Less than 10%. Massive difference, particularly if you're trying to build up a network through an advanced search system that you've used. And then, of course, we've got the big problem, is that you connect with somebody thinking, OK, I've seen that, let's connect. And the minute you're connected, they're straight into the sales pitch. Right? They're sending you their latest PowerPoint of our product range. They're sending you product details. They're saying, I want to come and do a sales pitch to you. Uh -uh. At the end of the day, whilst LinkedIn is a lead generation tool, it is also a business network. So we should treat it as a business network. You don't walk into a, a business network meeting and try to sell to everybody you've met for the first time. Oh, here's my business card. By the way, let me tell you what I'm going to do, tell you today. You're about the digital marketing company. I don't know anything about you, but I'm going to really select it. Oh, here you, go. Right? you don't do it. So why would you want to do it on LinkedIn? It just, to me, it's, it's madness. So what you've got to talk about is, is actually building the relationship, which we'll come on to. But don't try and sell. You can contact them, and here's a trick for you, and it's so often underused. If somebody connects with your invitation, your next message to them should be, thank you for connecting. Wow. The power of those words, thank you, are so underestimated. Just by saying thank you starts to build that relationship. You don't have to say anything more. You might want to put an extra line in it, say, I see you're going to an event next week, I'm going to be there too, perhaps we could have a coffee, if it suits. Just saying thank you to people who accept your connection starts to build that relationship. And the relationship marketing is what it's all about. People talk to me about LinkedIn, they say, ah, oh, it takes too much time. If you're using it for sales, I suggest you could do most of what you need to do through either the basic LinkedIn or LinkedIn Premium. LinkedIn. Uh, uh, Sales Navigator is a completely different fishy game, but on the basic and the premium, you can do most of what you're talking about, and you can be looking at less than five to 10 minutes a day. And when I do sales training for sales teams, I say to them, you know, when you talk about the regime, a lot of salespeople are walking to the office, first of all, make a cup of coffee, as we do. We sit down at the desk, we've got the cup of coffee, and we start going through our emails. While you're drinking that coffee, 
you could have done your daily updates on LinkedIn. You could have looked at who's viewed your profile and you could have responded. You could have invited five or ten people from your advanced search list to connect with you with a reason and a personal note sending out. You could have accepted connection requests from people that have sent them to you, having seen whether they viewed your profile or whether it's somebody that you want to accept from. You could have actually posted a bit of content. And you can do that in five to ten minutes a day. That's it, over a cup of coffee. It is not going to ingress in sales time. It really isn't. But it's about a system, it's about a process. And then we talk about the relationship bit. And I, and I talk about relationship marketing. And Sales Navigator has got a system in this that basically does all this for you. But you can create your own sort of Heath Robinson version. And what it is, is you know, your secret relationship might be your first message is, thanks for connecting with me. And then you might diary that for another seven days and say, by the way, I see that you're in whatever. Here's some information I think you might find useful. And you send them some information. You educate and inform. You engage. You add value to the conversation. You might get to the third element and say, there we go. Now we start talking about, by the way, we've, we've got a promotion coming up on this. If you're interested, let me know. And so as you start to build that relationship messaging, your sales message starts to, to build in. And then we talk about publishing. I'm a little bit behind, I'm talking too long, I do apologise. We talk about messaging. So, you've got a very simple system on here. When you go into to, to LinkedIn, again, you can put share an article, photo, video. It's very easy to do. You can start typing straight away. You can actually uh, put an article up there. You can add links in there. You can add content. Do, try not to send anything out on LinkedIn without an image. Because more people will actually read anything that you post if it's got an image associated with it. So always try and put an image. So if you can, if you see an image that you think is really useful, save it to your, your, your desktop to make it easy for you to import it in when you're actually sending some content out. Ben Franklin, you know, this is the Bible as far as I'm concerned. Either write something worth reading about or do something worth writing about. Right? He wrote that 300 years ago. That's, that's for everything in digital marketing because there's so much rubbish out there, isn't it? True. Right? If you've got something interesting to say, say it. If you've got nothing interesting to say, don't. And that's the maxim you should learn by. Do not put stuff up there that's not adding value. Because people will just switch off from your content and they might miss the next bit of content that's got real value to it. And of course, what we should be looking at is if you don't tell your story on LinkedIn, your competitors will tell a story and they'll tell it to your clients. So make sure that you are contributing regularly to LinkedIn. Put some information up there as often as you possibly can. And then where do you post this in terms of content? Well, again, I talk about thinking outside the box. What content are you going to put up? Is it a video? Is it words? Is it articles? Is it a snippet of information that you're going to put up there? What other platforms could that content go on to? So it's not just on LinkedIn. Where else can you share it? So if you've got it on your LinkedIn profile, could you actually share it through your company profile? Could it be on the company profile and you share it on your own personal? Could you put it, turn it into a blog and put it on your company website? Start thinking about a calendar, which I'll come on to in a minute. And then you've got to think about it in terms of content. The more complex the content gets, who's going to create it? If you're going to have a video, who's actually going to create that video? Who's going to do it for you? Who's going to configure it correctly? And what time do they need to actually produce that? And that's where we start thinking about, well, you know, one size of content does not fit all. You know, different people want different things. Okay? So you've got to start thinking that now we're tailoring the content, not to what you want to say, but to what your customers want to read and how they want to read it. So if you start looking at thinking of a lot of people are actually engaging with my content, and they're engaging with my content when it's video, you need to do more video. If they're engaging with your content when you're putting up white papers on there, then you need to do more white papers. Right? So start looking at the analytics of who's actually using and sharing your content. And that's all about adding to your LinkedIn profile, you're building trust. Right? And by building trust, you're building more of an authority. People see you as somebody who knows what they're talking about, who's regularly commenting, who's adding value to the conversation. And that calendar, editorial calendar, can easily be done on a spreadsheet. What are you going to post? When are you going to post it? What's the title going to be? Where is it going to go? Who's going to help you produce it? And you've got to put video into that calendar. Right? Because video is everywhere at the moment. There's a thing yesterday that I've been seeing recently. In, by 2019, some of that 80% of, of web, um, web traffic is going to be video related. So if you're not using video, you're going to get left behind. But the one thing that a lot of people miss, and it's not just for the print show, is print. You know, the power of print, the power of that touchy-feely 
So you've got all your LinkedIn profile and you've got all the information out there, but the power of actually sending something to somebody about the information that you've got, that touchy thing, it's massive. And you combine print, video, and digital marketing, you will start to see your conversion rates increase tenfold. You can get there without video, don't, don't get me wrong. You can get there without video. People want to read, we're all lazy, we're all modern people, we've got the phone, we want to click on it, we want to watch, we don't want to read. So let's start considering video. And video doesn't have to be live, certainly doesn't have to be a selfie video. It can be animation, it can be a voiceover to a PowerPoint, whatever. But it's got to be image based. And then we talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn now allows you to put your own videos on there. I don't know whether you know this. Anybody tried it? Anybody put any videos on? Absolutely works brilliant. Oh, I've got my new post book there. I mean, that was a great presentation. You know, there's a reason Woolworths went out of business. Coming back to my first, first slide evolve or die. You can actually put snippet videos onto LinkedIn. The key to that is putting those videos elsewhere as well, whether it's on a YouTube channel, whether it's on your website, whether you put a blog up there with your video on, but you need to be putting video content onto the system. We then look at LinkedIn, all the added stuff. Obviously, LinkedIn groups, I haven't got to, anybody in a LinkedIn group? Yeah? All right. Have a look for the groups where your customers are, not what you do. If you're a print buyer and you find, join a group of print buyers, you're amongst all your competitors. Yeah, you want to actually be where your customers are. So look for the groups that your customers are likely to be in. And an easy starting point is look who's already a customer, look at their LinkedIn profiles, and see which groups they're members of. And join those groups, add value to that conversation. Anybody heard of SlideShare? Well, SlideShare is owned by LinkedIn. So effectively, if I've got my PowerPoint presentation today, I can actually take the slides, I can put them up on SlideShare, it's another way for me to show authority, it's another way for me to be found, and of course it's being indexed by LinkedIn as well. And then we've got the, the LinkedIn messaging that's going on there, you know, the, all the ads, which I, I really haven't got time to go into, but you can do a whole ad campaign, like a Google ad campaign through LinkedIn, absolutely huge and specifically targeted when set up correctly. And then sales navigation, we've got all the point drive, gen forms, the team stuff, the social selling index. If you are big enough and getting enough business through LinkedIn to warrant moving on to sales navigator, these tools are absolutely brilliant, but they're not cheap. All right, so you need to be at a certain level of performance and involvement on LinkedIn before you move on to Sales Navigator. But for those people who are using it day in, day out for sales, and ultimately that's all we're doing it for sales, you will evolve to Sales Navigator. And some of these tools will actually automate an awful lot of what I was talking about earlier on. So, get the basics right. Plan it, make sure you've got the right content, make sure you've got your profile sorted, solid foundation, moving forward. Create that content plan so you don't have to scratch around to say what content can I post today. Have it ready in advance. Right. And be ahead of the game. Work to that editorial calendar. Last, he says, speaking very quickly. Um, this is a guy called Joe Paluzzi. He runs a company called Content Marketing Institute in America. He was at Technology for Marketing when I was there earlier this year. And he talked about the different way of subscribers. And email subscribers are obviously still, still the top. Print subscribers are number two. LinkedIn subscribers are number three. When you start to get down to your Facebook and your Twitter and etc., those subscribers, they're minuscule in terms of their, their involvement. Right? So when we talk at the top three, we're talking about subscribers. These are people that want to receive information from you. And of course, 99% of people will get on their mobile first. First thing in the morning you do is you pick up your mobile phone, you read your messages, last thing at night, you pick up your mobile phone, you do whatever, you put it back down again. Your customers are doing exactly the same. All right? So mobile communication, whichever the format, is, is still primary. But now what we've got is the situation where everybody's going to have to start thinking about properly opting in. And if I use this terrible phrase, oops, excuse me, who's heard of GDPR? General Data Protection Regulations, 25th of May 2018, became um, uh, valid in April 2016, but time is running out. Effectively, you have to look at your email database, your paper database, your online database, whatever you've got, whether you've got Excel spreadsheets, doesn't matter, anybody's data that you hold is now subject to general data protection regulations. And if you are non-compliant with it, you could get a swift kick, okay? We've still got plenty of time to get this sorted, but if you don't know about GDPR, I'm talking about GDPR tomorrow. You're not here, no shame, all right? But if anybody wants, if anybody does want any information about GDPR, ping me an email, I'll send you out the slides from tomorrow and the background information I'm gonna be giving out, I'll certainly send them out to anybody tomorrow but you need to be thinking about GDPR. If you've never heard of it or you don't know what to do with it, you need to start thinking about it now. May is going to come up very, very quickly, and this is one of those things you cannot ignore.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. And I've run over way over time. I do apologise. Anybody got any questions? I've done founded a lot of you, haven't I?